Oh, thank you. <laughs> Welcome to the Loving Others Well Summit. Hi, everybody. My name is Michelle Schaefer. This is my husband, Loving Bobby. Well Summit. Hi, everybody. Schaefer, this is my husband. Just making, making sure that we are live on Facebook as well. It looks like we are. So hello, everybody on Facebook. We're uh, very, very happy to be here with you guys tonight, and we are doing a three-day summit. Anybody is welcome. Um, this is hosted by Girl Power Alliance and Real Men Alliance, and we're just, uh, we're excited to come here tonight and share a couple of things with you. 30 minutes, all three days and nights that we're going to be coming together with you. We're going to be talking about loving others well, being that it's Valentine's Day in a couple of days. Yes, it is a Hallmark holiday, but... It's still a great opportunity to uh, take the time to tell the people that you love that you love them. Maybe do something a little extra special. If you guys have plans out there for Valentine's Day, um, why don't you drop a little heart emoji in the comments of either the live or the Zoom so we can see that you are you are ahead of the game. You're not the last minute person going in the morning before your spouse wakes up or on the way home from work uh, be, be, uh, to make sure that they, they don't think, oh, I forgot. You didn't forget. You remembered. <laughs> so, um, hi, Bobby. You're muted. You have to tell me that every single time. Maybe someday I'll learn. You know, after all these years of marriage, I should at least know that one. Uh, just a little bit of background on us before we get started tonight. Um, I, Bobby and I have been together. This year will mark 24 years, uh, 22 years married, 24 years together. And we met on a blind date. And our marriage, we're both entrepreneurs. So that's a whole, we should have done a whole being married and being entrepreneurs. It's a whole separate conversation. Blended family, we have been through a lot of things and I believe that uh, marriage is one of the, and family is one of the biggest areas that the enemy attacks to keep uh, families broken up, to break up marriages, to keep resentments and all uh, just bitterness and fighting and to keep us from really experiencing, um, you know, the gift that marriage is. And I say that not even joking. <laughs> Marriage is an incredible gift. It's hard. It takes a lot of work. And so what we thought we would do tonight um, for the first night is really talk about the ways that you can um, express and show uh, your spouse that you love them, um, the, your outward expression of loving them well. I'm going to let Bobby start. If you want to just start with one, we can go back and forth if you want, or you can do all three of yours. Um, he's going to just share from his heart. Just so you know, I, we didn't we didn't come together to plan this conversation. I said, here's the topic. Here's what you're saying. And that was the extent of our planning. So go ahead, babe. Did you just say here's and here's what you're saying? So in other <laughs> words, you scripted out exactly what I need to say. I wish I, I could do that for you. Me sometimes. <laughs> I wish. Um, it, she's right. We did not script this. I'm not. I'm. For one, I'm not the type of person that wants to put information out there at all with, that's completely scripted. I mean, there's some things you got to do to get information out, but uh, for the most part, we're just kind of off the cuff tonight. Um, and she did mention to me this morning, she said, uh, come up with three ways to how you express your love to me. <laughs> and my answer right off the bat is there's way more than three. I do so many things that shows her, right? No, I'm just kidding. Way um, more. I would almost think, though, that you would need to ask your spouse, how am I showing my love for you? You know, and and, and I'm sure they'll tell you. I'm sure that he or she will tell you uh, if that's what you really want to know. Uh, but but the things that, you know, I was just talking to one of the Lemon's husband, actually, this morning, Glenn, and we were talking about, I asked him, I said, how long have you been married? He said five years. And, I, and I'm thinking back to when we were married just five years, because we're now about, what, 20, 21, 22 years? Well, how many years are we married? I'm already in trouble, because I don't know exactly how many years, but it's it's over 20 years we've been married. And I look back to five years in, and it's like you truly just don't know what 
what the level of love that you're going to have for this person is really going to even don't be yet. No, what you really don't. You, yeah. I mean, you just you have so much to go through. You have so many trials and tribulations and triumphs and just kids and and just so many things that are going to pop up that are going to challenge you. Uh, but what I can say today is that the love that I have for her after over 20 years is so much deeper, so much more thorough, so much more, you know, visible to me than than ever. And maybe this is different for men. I don't know. Maybe we're not capable of the type of love that women can give us so early on in, in the marriage. Uh, but with that said, she asked me a specific question and she said, how, you know, at least three ways to how I express my love to her. And so the first one that I would say, and I did write this down, and it's right below my camera, so I look like I'm looking right at you, because usually we're like looking over here, right? Um, the first one on my little yellow sticky is that I try my very best to say I love you every day, out loud, multiple times. And I hope that's a deal for her, a big deal for her. Um, I guess she can let me know, but I just, it's just something, and I'm not talking about you get done on a phone call. Okay. Love you. Bye. You know, I real quick. It's just kind of natural. It's just kind of almost scripted, if you will. Um, I really like, I'll just look over when we're late at night watching TV before we go to bed and I'll just, just interrupt the show we're watching and say it. I, I recall doing it last night. So that's, that's one. He does. He's very, very good at that. Um, I will say on the receiving end, you know, being together as long as we have, when you have little kids at home, and I think in the early years of your marriage, you're kind of just trying to keep your head above water. I, I really, I, and I say that with like love because I miss it. I'll be honest with you. We have been empty nesters now for two years, which almost makes me cry. And in the thick of, of having all of your children at home, it's hard to think of the things that we're talking to you about now. But if some of the things that we can share with you, no matter where you're at in your marriage, can just add one little thing um, to keep you guys knowing that the other person um, loves you and, and really staying focused on the ways that they do that. Bobby is incredibly good at doing that. Um, he always has been, and I don't want to, I'm not going to say anything because I don't want, I want to go over the things that you're saying with something that I might say about you. So you can go do to whatever your you want. Go ahead. You can do your next one. Well, and just so everybody knows, I want to be clear here. I have a whole bunch of stuff written down, not just three. There's like 10. Just, just so you know, because there's so many, there's so many things that I like to do for her to know for sure that I love her. Um, uh, the, I'm, I'm going to go to the very bottom of my list. This was the last one that I put on just before the call here. And I think it's an important one. I think it's important for all of us to make sure that our spouses feel valuable in the roles that they're, that they're in within your household, whether they are... Uh, your wife or husband stay at home, you know, working, stay at home, I should say, whether they're, you know, whether they're a stay at home mom and dad, mom or dad, whether they are out in the working force, um, whatever it is, uh, make them feel valuable. If they're the, the one that's cleaning the house and making the food, well, make them feel valuable. Make them make for sure that they know that you appreciate um, what what you're doing, what they're doing for you. Um, and so I tried my best to make her feel valuable in all the things that she does, including Girl Power Alliance. She's so amazing at, at uh, you know, her communication skills to, to all the people here and uh, everything else she does at home, too. She's just unbelievable and amazing at what she does. So there's Thank another you. one for you. Thank you very much. Um, before you get to your third one, I'll, I'll, I'll take one of mine. Um, growing up in the in in a Christian household with um, we grew up my generation the generation called Gen X was the was one of the first generations of ha being a latchkey kid where you had a lot of families had a, a mom that went to work um, the generation before they didn't moms their job was at home and so I was we were the first generation that had uh, that had parents that that worked. And um, so the the values that came from kind of the Christian home and having a, primarily, usually the mother stay at home was 
Um, and if you look at like the 50s, women were in service to their husbands. That's That was their job. Their job was to serve their husbands and to serve their household and to keep their house really nice. And then something happened and um, women became very bitter about that. They know, oh, I'm not subservient, you know, talk about and, and the Paul talks about that being subservient, you know, serve being subservient to the head of the household. But I will tell you, I find true joy in being in service to my husband and my children. I don't consider it a lesser role or being subservient. It feels like an honor to me to cook for, to take care of the household, to do things that, that, that I, that are natural to me, making the, you know, decorating the house, decorating for the holidays. Um, I do that in the service of my family. And since, uh, you know, obviously my husband, first and foremost, um, I find joy in in doing service to him. And we have always been very partner in our relationship. So uh, it, whoever can do whatever, it, it's not that it's not that we actually even mapped it out. Um, but, you know, like, for example, the laundry for many, many years, I was I did the bulk of that. I found, even though I hate laundry, I found joy in in serving my family. And so today I was doing something and Bobby was folding the laundry. That there is something very holy about being in service to your spouse with from a position of joy. It may I want to make him happy. I want to do things for him. I want to make his life easier. And um, I think that when you both have that attitude, you really have a really healthy marriage. Bobby definitely has that toward me. So that would be my number one. And many of you get to see that toward you as well. Um, she she is a person that makes sure people, like I said, I'd like to make her feel valuable. She makes people feel valuable in this life. And she serves people in this life, like over the top, just complete an utter servant for people. And I appreciate about that, that about her for sure. Um, I just thought of something that I wanted to say that I didn't put on my list, but I did say it on one of the classes that you and I did uh, not too long ago, six months ago with uh, on marriage. And it, you know, of course I, you know, I tell her she's beautiful every day inside and out. And, and I don't know if guys, you, do that all the time to your wife because so many you know they probably don't like to hear that sometimes like right before bed and they got this mask thing going on and all i still think she's beautiful it doesn't matter it's a whole different level as you get past the five year and the 10 year and the 15 year and the 20 year mark it's just a whole different level of love um that i feel for her but i support her and all that she does i also do laundry and clean the house I do not cook. She probably would feel like I hate her if I tried to cook for her. So I stay away from that one. That one does not work for me. Um, I like to hold her hand in public. I mean, a lot of, I'm just saying some of those things that are on my, my list, but the one thing I do want to say um, as my number three uh, is, and there's no particular order in any of the ones that I've said tonight, but I, um, I, I said this on the other class that we did, Michelle, and it's, I and I said this to Glenn this morning too, and I used the word allow accidentally. And I said, Yeah, I like to allow her. And I'm like, wait a minute, allow? I don't allow my wife to do anything. It was just the wrong word. And I said, let me think of a word. And I, I finally came up with the word encourage. I like to encourage her to be her own person outside of me and her. Because, you know, and, and I said this on those calls months ago it you know we're all humans and we all we are different we do like different things we do feel differently towards certain situations we act and react differently we are separate although we're married but we're still we have our own minds too and i want michelle and i would encourage you all to, to think about this one i want you guys to think sometimes you know, separately, we all have dreams right but that it doesn't mean that she has the same exact dreams that i do so if she has a different dream, I like to encourage her to keep dreaming. Let's let's promote that too. And and I don't want to be just the you know I, just, I know a lot of guys kind of old fashioned guys that just like to dictate what their wives and their families do, and it's just all about them. And and I just don't like to hear that because it's kind of it's almost it's almost a, a prison for some people that they have to do what the other person wants to do and think like they think and. It doesn't have to be just men toward women. It can be the other way too. Uh, but I like, I, I encourage her always to be her own person as well, have her own dreams. If she wants to do something and she's passionate about it, do it. 
I'm not going to say no. I, I'm, that's not my job. I, I'm not. I mean, unless it's something illegal or you know what I mean. You can joke about that, but you'd support I, me in that too. <laughs> I, I might. I might. But yeah, I just like her to be her own person. I want her to live have the best life that she could possibly have. I like to encourage and support her in everything that she does. And yes, I am her biggest cheerleader. I truly am. And I just heard that about a week, two weeks ago on something I was listening to that if your spouse isn't, you're not you're the biggest cheerleader for your spouse, then you need to start being that and, and kind of going in that direction. It's really going to help uh, to have a much better relationship as you move forward. It's really not that complicated. I mean, the relationships in general are complicated because we're these messed up beings, right? We come with our own baggage and all our own ideas and everything. But the truth of the matter is having a good relationship, having a good and healthy marriage, it actually isn't that hard. It's just massive amounts of humility and communication and actually putting the other person ahead of you. And I know that there are a lot of people that are feeling uncomfortable just that I said that. But but part of being a believer and part of the whole the whole following Jesus and learning to, to as much as you can emulate the way that he lived and led is really putting other people's needs in front of yours. And, and within the, the confines of a marriage, if you have a husband and a wife that are both doing that, that are putting the other person's needs above their own, can you imagine how fulfilled you would both feel? Because, feel because you are putting your needs above his and he's putting his needs above yours. And it just creates this beautiful um, relationship where you both feel that the other person is putting you ahead of them, which makes you just want to do more for them. Right. It's this it's really it's not that complicated. Now, the, the reason it gets complicated is because we have a hard time expressing our true feelings without resentment and we get offended and we put a, we have a lot of unspoken expectations in a marriage. Um, my number two uh, ways of loving my husband well is getting to know him. This seems like a no brainer, but the truth is getting to know him, not trying to put my likes and my, like he just said, he wants me to have the desires of my heart and be who, my own person. But I think oftentimes, you know, um, women can, uh, m women and men, they can expect when they become a couple that I do all these things and uh, like, that's the thing that you do. I want to do things that he does. Like I want to have hobby. I have my own person, have my own things, but I want to have hobbies together. I want to enjoy the things that he enjoys together. So getting to know the things that he likes isn't it is an important thing to me. It's one of the ways that I want to show him that I care. I'm interested in him. We've been lucky because we've also worked together for many years, but couples that have separate jobs, you have separate lives. You have separate friends at your work. You have separate situations there. It's separate. So if you're not finding common ground outside of just being a parent and being a couple, having commonality in your life, you, you know, things that you enjoy together, we, we hike. We like to snorkel. We like to, you know, do adventure trips. And there, we have a lot of things that we enjoy to do together as hobbies just because. And, you know, he has attempted things that I've liked. I've attempted, attempted things that he's liked so that there are more things that we can do as a couple. And so that's that's my number two. Did you do your number three already? I did like 20 or 30 of them, I think. <laughs> um, okay, I'll go next. I'll go next. My number three, and there's a million, but I just thought giving people some examples of, of, of ways that you can express outwardly express um, to, to the other person that you're, that you love them, uh, loving others. Well, and by the way, you know where that comes from, that comes from Matthew chapter seven, verse 16, and you will know them uh, by your fruits and they will buy. Oh no, that's not it. It's, I can't see the verse, but it is in Matthew it says by this, all men will know that you are my disciples because you have love for one another. I believe that the expression of a healthy, loving marriage is one of the most profound expressions of, of being a follower of Christ and being a lover of Christ is, is the way that you and your spouse um, can express and love each other and really grow into marriage together. It takes years to get to know each other. Doesn't happen in the first couple of years. You think it might, but then you throw a child into the mix and now you're getting to know a whole new person. Then as you're growing and evolving in the relationship, new jobs, maybe you go to a new church, maybe you have a, you know, a new experience. You continually are becoming a new person. So you're continually getting to know your spouse. 
Um, I joke, me and Savannah, our youngest, I joke that I can say what I can tell what Bobby's going to say about a situation before she tells him. She's like, I'm going to tell dad this. Oh, well, like, this is what dad's going to say. We've been together a long time and we spend a lot of time together. Literally, when COVID happened and people came home for the first time and they were working at home together, our lives didn't change. We have been working at home side by side, get up in the morning together, go to the gym together, work at home together, go to events together for the bulk of our marriage. We know each other very, very well now and still are getting to know each other, right? Um, anyway, I totally sidebarred on that, but I wanted to um, I wanted to say this another way that I think is really important because many men, if you get the book, um, The Five Love Languages, I think it's an important thing to uh, understand the ways that your spouse receives love. That's important because it might be different. You, you might be serving them because your love language is service and they like it, right? But their real love language is words of affirmation. So here you're just cooking and cleaning and doing all this. But you never say something to your spouse because that's the way they receive it. So they're not really being able to receive fully all the acts that you're doing for them. So it's important to understand how they receive love. And statistically, one of the main ways that men feel loved is physical touch. Um, so in the confines of marriage, we could do a whole summit on sex and marriage, biblical marriage, because it's there's a lot of hangups, especially growing up in a church where it was like purity, 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 and then get married. And now, you know, be wild in the bedroom, be wild in the bedroom. And it's a hard switch for a lot of people. Number one, number two, there's so many sexual dysfunctions because of uh, traumas or abuse or, you know, sexual assault. So it can be a very complicated thing. Um, but physical touch is an important, very, very important part of marriage um, for especially on the on the receiving side of men. So, um, you know, you'll go you'll go a real busy day and realize maybe you haven't even like kissed for the day. And so this is a common question we ask each other. Did you even kiss me today? <laughs> a common thing that we say. Be like, yes, I kissed you this morning. No, you didn't. And um, so we, it's one of the things that we That's her saying that <laughs> so and just so everybody knows, I don't have any hangups when it comes to sex and all well, that stuff. So. Because two out of three women have been sexually assaulted. So the, the, I know it the is a serious, for, yeah, I, I know that's, that's very it's serious. It's not the thing. same number and it <laughs> is a hard switch and, you know, but there are some amazing books out there. Again, this is about open communication, kind of letting yourself go. Go read Song of Solomon in many different versions. And that is in the Bible. It talks about pleasure and just the act of, of your physical bodies giving the other person pleasure. I mean, God created the physical body so that within uh, the intimacy, you can actually bring somebody to the point of pleasure that it's called an orgasm. I mean, that's a, that is a, that's God designed a body to do that. That's a remarkable thing. And that tells me that that mattered to God in the confines of a, of a marriage. So it's an important thing that must be addressed. Um, my father-in-law said just recently, we were talking about uh, somebody that we knew that was getting a divorce. And he said, he asked the question, are you, are you still having sex? And um, the answer was no. And Bobby's dad said, you know, sex is the glue. Sex is the glue. So that it's something that you need to pay attention to. If there are actual like like physical dysfunctions, then it's something that needs to be to, to be addressed. Um, you can there are for sure there are tons of great books. You can get a sex therapist, you can go to counseling, but it's something that is really, really an important aspect of of a marriage. Yeah, figure it out. Yeah, you're missing out. Figure that one out big time. Uh, you know, I was one thing I was gonna say too, you probably have stuff to fill up in the next six hours because you you're very good at at getting the news out there, but I wanted to, uh, I, I did uh, kind of cheat before the call, right before the call, and I just Googled something, um, you know, like what, what, how, what are ways that men can best love their wives? I Googled something like that. I had to take my, I can't see you all now because I had to, I'm looking on my computer at something different. And one of the ones that came up is, is or at least something that there was in a forum that I was reading it's the one that we've all heard in, in how men are supposed to love their wives. And, and it, I'm just going to read this directly off my screen. It says the Bible has quite a bit to say about love and marriage, most notably in Ephesians 5, 25 through 33. Everybody knows this, what this is going to say here. 
this passage is pretty clear. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. In other words, she died. Jesus died uh, for, for the church. And it's like, gosh, is that what I'm supposed to do? And it says that that's a tall order. Christ's love for the church was sacrificial, unconditional, and beyond the bounds of our human meter sticks. So if we're playing the comparison game, we husbands have some big shoes to fill. And it, it is very true. So I, I just wanted to kind of throw that out there that, you know, if you were wondering how we were supposed to love our wives, that's what the Bible says. Uh, enough to basically die for them and not to dictate them, not to, you know, to make them like you and love and do all the things you do and do all the things you say to do and, and you know, expect that they do or else, you know what I mean? That's just not what it's, that's not what that verse says. Um, you know, and so I, and, and I don't know if this just came naturally to me, probably didn't come naturally, but what it did, but what I saw in my parents, what I saw in my grandparents was exactly what that verse says. So I had, I had great examples growing up. Many of you didn't. So if you didn't and you need to know, that's where you need to go check, check that verse out in the Bible and know exactly what God expects and how we're supposed to love our wives. So Thank you for that. Uh, I want to say something about that because I didn't have that example. And uh, many, many, many people use that that is their excuse. Well, my parents were this and that. I'm called BS. You are a grown up and you have to take responsibility for the way that you behave as an adult in your marriage. There is plenty of information out there. There are books, there are podcasts, there's free things. And you know innately what it is to treat somebody well. And just as there are toxic men, there are absolutely toxic females that come in and they try to lord over their whole families. They nag and complain. They never edify their husband. They never let the man feel valued um, in all of the things that they do that are unspoken and small, taking care of the yard, taking care of the of the cars, taking care of the bills, um, doing all these little things that are very much expected on the woman's side, but never, ever actually called out and and edified and said, I see you. I see what you're doing. All these things that seem small that add up to one thing that I don't have to think of. I heard it said one time, like uh, as a woman, you don't need a man, right? Like a man doesn't, we don't need, like we can live and function on our own, but isn't it the most incredible gift to have a partner that takes care of things? So there are some things that you actually don't have to handle. I was a single mom for a number of years. This was very hard for me when we got together and probably still is. Bobby could tell you that, you know, I have a hard time like handing things over because I was so accustomed to doing everything I had to do everything. Then Bobby comes in and he handles things. And it took me years to be able to trust that he was really going to do that, that um, just to let go of things. But what a gift to be able to have a spouse that handles one area of the relationship together on both sides, either the wife or the husband, and, and to trust each other in the taking care of whatever those things are. Um, I think it's important that you not get wrapped up in roles. Whatever you figure out within your marriage is your role to handle, then it's nobody's business. This is your marriage. It's between you, your spouse, and God. And if anybody outside of your marriage doesn't agree with the way that you guys are doing it, it's literally none of their business. Their, their opinions don't pay your bills. Their opinions don't you know, stop your arguments. Um, and I would just say this, learn the skill of immediate forgiveness. Bobby has been the most excellent example of Im immediately like we could have, you know, we don't we don't fight very often anymore. We don't have kids at home. We have way less things to argue about. Um, so it's not very often. But in the early years of blending families, both of us working full time, feeling like all hell was breaking loose daily in our world, there were arguments. It just there were arguments. Um, but Bobby was always so amazing. Like I linger. It's like we make up, but the rest of the night, I'm just not feeling it. I'm still like in the fight in my mind and my emotions. But he was immediately, he was done. We said, sorry, we resolved it or whatever. And he's over, he's back to his normal, sweet, happy self. And I was just like, I don't get how you can do that. It's taken many years for me to be able to do that. Like immediate forgiveness, even before an apology comes. If you can do that, your marriage will be so much more um, peaceful within the confines of your home. And that's the only thing that matters. 
And, and just a last little thing here on both sides. Don't be the person that complains about your spouse to your friends. Stop it. Even if your spouse never hears it, because guess what happens? You're hearing it. And the things that you repeat over and over become a self-fulfilling prophecy. So if you want your spouse to change and lead and be amazing, then speak about your spouse, the, it, those things. Speak those things into existence. I'm a big believer in that, speaking them to an, into existence. And when your spouse does something that really that you love, say something to them and say something publicly and, you know, just help them to feel, especially men feeling respected. I, I think it's not just men, um, but feeling respected is a big, big uh, thing for, for men and, and women also. Any last things here, Bobby, as we end up the first night of the Loving Others Well Summit? Uh, I would just say that if you're watching the replay of this, uh, because it was shared with you, and um, actually I should say it this way, those of you that are here live, um, if you have People in your lives, you know, siblings, good friends at work, at church, wherever, other moms and dads at school that you take your kids to. If they, if you feel like they need to hear this or something like this, uh, share it with them. Um, show them who we are here um, with this company, and and you know what I mean, and so that they can see what's inside. And and you know the the whole thing about us getting better and having it change all of the people around us because we've gotten better is a really big deal for Michelle and I. We really want to see people improve uh, so that, that everybody around them improves and all of our lives can just get better and better together. And so share this. Uh, and those that did watch this on the recording, I'm glad you got to see this. Yes, thank you for joining us. Um, tomorrow we'll be talking all about singles. And it will be at 10 a.m. Pacific tomorrow. We'll have some guests on. And then on, wait, to Monday, Tuesday. So Wednesday, <laughs> on Wednesday, is that actually Valentine's Day? On Wednesday, we will be talking about loving your children well. And I'll have a guest on with me there. Um, again, you, you are invited to partake in um, Girl Power Alliance if you are a woman, in Real Men Alliance if you are a man. And just make the decision that you're going to get better. Just make the decision. My, the last, the last piece of what I do for my husband is I work on me so that I can be a better wife. I can be a better mother. I can be a better leader. I can be a better lover. I can be better in business. All of those things I work on for my husband as a gift. One of the best gifts you yes. can get to people that you love is the best version of yourself. So we just want to say thank you for being here with us tonight. Uh, we want to welcome you into our communities, either Girl Power Alliance or Real Men Alliance, and just take a stand for your family by becoming the best version of yourselves. Thank yes. you, babes. Bye, everybody. Have a good night.